Praise the Lord. Our topic for today is you are an eyewitness of the gospel. An eyewitness of the gospel. Now let's go into the Bible. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'm reading from verses 16. The King James Version. I read all of 16 to 21. Verse 16 says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Hallelujah. 17, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. 18, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. 19 says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawns and the day star arises in our hearts. 20 says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And 21, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Father, we want to thank you this blessed Sunday morning. We thank you because even in your calendar, you know this day will be like this. We know you're going to be speaking through us this day. Lord, we ask that as you speak through us, the hearts that are connected, the ones who are watching right now, Lord, they'll receive an answer to their questions. They'll receive an answer to their desires. They'll receive an answer to their challenges. And you dispatch angels on behalf of them to bring forth testimonies and miracles before them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to pray. Amen. And the church says a big amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Again, the title, an eyewitness of the gospel. You are an eyewitness of the gospel. Now, if you look at verse 16, verse 16 says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Praise God. Now, Peter is telling, telling them that, listen, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. In other words, we have not come with stories put together. Praise God. We have not come with fables. He's saying, hey, listen, we saw it. We saw it all. We have come with the real deal. We are not coming with, you know, fake talks. We are not coming with, you know, no news that are not real. But we're coming with real news. News that we saw with our own very eyes. Information that we beheld with our own very eyes. Not they told us. We saw it. Now Peter is telling them, he says, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Now there are stories, you know, put together. Imagined fables. He says, when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Praise God. We are eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, like I said, Peter said, we have not followed, you know, imagined fables, put up stories. No. He said, listen, we followed him. We saw it all. And he told us concerning his coming. Amen. And he says, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. What did they see? What Peter was talking about here in verse 16 was actually referring to Christ's transfiguration. He's saying we were eyewitnesses, which means he wasn't the only one that witnessed it. There were two others that witnessed it. These were Jesus' inner caucus, inner circle. And they were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Now let's look at it in Matthew chapter 17. The transfiguration of Jesus. Matthew 17, verses 1 to verse 8. I read the King James Version. Matthew 17, verses 1 says, And after six days, Jesus take Peter, James, and John. These are the three witnesses. 
his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun. Hallelujah. And his raiment was white as the light. Three, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Hmm. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Amen. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And verse 6 says, And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise. Be not afraid. And verse 8 says, And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Oh, Heavenly Father, someday we'll see you. Amen. We'll see your coming. Amen. Your face as bright as the sun. And you're shining like the morning daylight. Praise God. We'll see you, dear God. By the power of your spirit, we will see you. And we'll remain consistent in your word. Not looking left, not looking right. But stay true to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now this is so beautiful. This is what Peter was saying. That we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw him as he was transfigured. Not just me. Me, James and John. The three of us we saw. How his face started to shine like the sun. And then his body was glowing with light. And then while he was being transfigured, Moses and Elijah, they appeared. Praise God. And then a voice from heaven came and said, This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. In whom I am well pleased. Praise God. Now these are the weaknesses. Now you can also go to the book of Mark chapter 9. If you can write this down. Mark chapter 9 verses 2 to verse 8. This gives you another scripture that talks about the transfiguration of Jesus. And also you can go to the book of Luke chapter 9 and verse 28 to verse 36. Praise God. Amen. Now look at the later part of verse 16. He says, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Amen. Now Peter is telling us that we are witnesses. I, James and John, we, we saw it with our own very eyes. We witnessed it with our own very eyes. It was not a cunningly devised fable. We didn't put it all up. We didn't imagine those fables. No, this was real deal. We saw it. That's what Peter is saying. That we witnessed it with our own very eyes. Praise the Lord. You know, in the Jewish courts in those times, if anybody's going to co collaborate with you, you know, you need to have at least two or three witnesses to collaborate with your answer and follow with what you said for the court to accept what you did. Praise God. Even if you killed someone, if you can get two or three people that can collaborate with you and say, oh no, he wasn't, not, he wasn't the one who killed him. He was with us at home. We're all together. If those three witnesses can convince the court then he's acquitted. Praise God. That is who a witness is. Now you can imagine the beautiful thing here. Very, very interesting. That Jesus provided that witness to Peter. Praise God. He allowed Peter. He allowed James. He allowed John to witness this beautiful scene. To witness his transfiguration. To witness it so that they can go into the world and let the world know. That he indeed, he is God. Praise God. So he allowed him to witness. These were people in his inner court, his inner circle. He took them to the holy mount. Praise God. So they were eyewitnesses. Praise the Lord. Now the question is, who is an eyewitness? Praise God. Who is an eyewitness? I'm going to read what I have here. What I wrote down. Praise God. An eyewitness is a person. 
who actually sees some act or occurrence or theme. I'll say that again. A person who actually sees an act, occurrence, or theme and can give or testify firsthand account of it. Praise God. I'll give that definition one more time because my kids are writing the definition right now. Praise God. Eye service, eye witness. A person who actually sees some act, you know, occurrence or thing and can give or testify firsthand account of it. Praise God. That is who a witness is. Now we're going to go into the Bible. I'm going to be showing you, you know, scriptures that talks about a witness or witnesses. Amen. Some scriptures you already know, but this is a reminder. Praise God. I have about six, seven scriptures we're going to be looking at when it comes to a witness, an eyewitness. Amen. Now, he says, verse 16, but we were eyewitnesses of his gospel. Amen. You know, in a Jewish time, witnesses are sincerely valuable. For your testimony to be made true, you need witnesses. Amen. Look at Deuteronomy. Let's go to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 6. Praise God. Deuteronomy 17 verse 6 says, And the mouth of two witnesses, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. In other words, it takes two witnesses. It takes three witnesses for your own testimony to be confirmed. One person cannot be a witness and you are confirmed of whatever it is you, are, you have said, you've done, or you did not do. It takes two or three. And that's why even the Bible says, when two or three are gathered in my name, he is there. And right now, he is here right now. As you're watching me, if you're someone next to you, he's there next to you. Praise God. So he says, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. Now go again to chapter 19. Same Deuteronomy and we'll be reading verse 15. Deuteronomy 19 verse 15. I want you to follow me as we begin to look at witnesses. Amen. Verse 15 says, one witness shall not rise up against a man of any iniquity. One man cannot do it. He says, or oh, for any sin, in any sin that he sinned. He says, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. So in other words, for you to be a witness, it takes two or three. Praise God. He says, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, he says, shall the matter be established. Now go ahead to same 19. Now let's go, let's read verse 16. Verse 16 says, If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges, which shall be in those days. 18. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he hath thought to have done unto his brother. So shall thou put the evil away from among you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Very simple. That's why it takes two witnesses. It takes three witnesses for the word to be established. Amen. For whatever it is that you're doing or iniquity or, or, or progress that you have in your life to be established, it takes two or three to witness that. Amen. Now let's go to the New Testament. Look at Matthew chapter 18. 
Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 verse 16 says, 16 says, sorry, verse 16, Matthew 18 says, but if he will not hear thee, this is Jesus speaking right now. He says, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Praise God. He says, if you're going somewhere and nobody listens to you, he says, instead of going alone, take two people, take three people, so that when you get there, they stand as witness to what you want to say, your word is established. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now let's go ahead and look at Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. Praise God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is Jesus also speaking. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then something he said, and he said, And ye shall be witnesses unto me. He says, Both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria unto the utmost parts of the earth. Praise God. Now Jesus is saying to us right now, he's saying that, and ye shall be witnesses, but unto me, praise God, we shall be witnesses. So you are a witness of this gospel. You are a living, breathing witness of this gospel. Praise God. You don't need to look for an excuse not to witness this gospel. And the beautiful thing is, there are so many witnesses of this gospel. And you are a part of it. Amen. As a family right now, we are four in here. We are witnesses of this gospel. He says we're two of are gathered. We are four here. Plus the Holy Ghost, five. We are witnesses of this gospel. And Jesus is saying here right now. He says, but ye shall receive power. You shall receive power. He says, and after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, right now, we have the power to witness. We have the power, both in heaven and on earth. He says, we have the power. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both Lord, in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. Jesus is telling us here that we have to witness his gospel. We have to be bearers of this gospel. We have to go all out and minister this gospel. And let people know that, yes, this gospel is real. Let people know that this gospel is real. He says you are eyewitnesses, not eye services. Praise God. You are a witness of this gospel, not an eye service to the gospel. So stand as a witness, praise God. Stand as a witness to the gospel. Amen. Let's go to another chapter. Look at the same book of Acts chapter 5. Praise God. Acts chapter 5. Particularly verse 32. But I think I want to read. Um, let me read verse from verse 29. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. It says. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said. We ought to obey God rather than men. Say I obey God. I obey God. Say it again. I obey God rather than man praise god verse 30 says the god of our fathers raised up jesus whom you slay and hanged on a tree 31 he himself god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior this shows that jesus truly is god amen for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins now look at verse 32. Verse 32 says, And we are his what? Witnesses. Witnesses of these things. I'll say that again. I'll read that again. It says, And we are his witnesses. Say, I am God's witness. I am God's witness. I'm his witness to the gospel. I'm the witness to the word of God. I'm a witness to this good news. And I'll go about, be a bearer of this message. Of this mandate, it is my responsibility. Praise God. Verse 32 says, And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Praise God. 
Praise God. So when you tell yourself that you are a witness, you know, it says where two or three can stand as a witness, it is established. Sometimes you feel you are just you alone. But it says here in verse 32, it says, and we are his witnesses of this thing. It says, and so is also the Holy Ghost. He says, whom God has given to them that obey him. So if you are in obedience of God's word, the Holy Ghost dwells with you. So you and the Holy Ghost are two witnesses. That's what he's saying. So that any way you find yourself, you go, you witness this gospel, you are not alone. The fourth man is always with you. The Holy Ghost is always with you. So two of you can actually bring down 10,000. Two of you can bring, you know, millions down for this gospel and cause the darkness into light amen praise god let's go ahead look at first timothy again we're talking about a weakness and our witness first timothy chapter 6 verse 12 this is our theme for the year the year of the good fight this is paul who was talking first timothy 6 verse 12 our reader he says verse 12 says fight the good fight of faith Lay hold on to eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and had professed a good profession before what? Many witnesses. He's saying fight the good fight of faith. This year there's been a virus looming all over the world. He has, this virus, this one little virus has caused so many havoc here and there. Praise God. You know, but there's, there's this... Um, saying that I, I, I noticed the church said, said, he said, one little virus has caused havoc. How much more a little monster seed, what it can do of faith. Praise God. Now, Peter, Paul is saying, yeah, fight the good fight of faith. He says, lay hold on to eternal life. We are unto thou art also called and has professed a good profession. He says, before many witnesses. So before the year runs out, people will witness the good fight of faith in your life. They'll witness the testimonies in your life. They'll witness the miracles in your life. They'll witness God's goodness in your life. They'll witness the favor of God in your life. They'll witness the victory of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you're fighting a good fight. Now listen, this good fight of faith you're fighting is God fighting for you. Because you're not fighting it alone. He says, out of the mouth of two or three weaknesses, he's established. The Holy Ghost is with you all the way. Praise God. Amen. Let's go ahead. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And see one other thing there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And verse 2. The King James Version. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. He says, and the things that thou hast heard of me. He says, among many weaknesses. He says, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. This gospel has been committed to your trust. It has been committed to you. You are a witness of this gospel. You are a bearer of this gospel. You have to preach this gospel. I want to read the Amplified, the classic version of this verse. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 2. The amplified version, the classic version says, And the instructions which you have heard from me, along with many witnesses, he says, transmit and entrust as a deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. Praise God. He's saying this gospel that we've heard. Praise God. He says you have the responsibility right now as a witness of this gospel. To transmit this gospel. And entrust it. Deposit it to others. So that they can become witnesses of this gospel. Praise God. So that they can become competent and qualified of this gospel. So you are an eyewitness of this gospel. Praise God. You are a partaker. Of this nature. A partaker and a participator of this divine nature. Praise God. Peter says we are witnesses of his majesty. Hallelujah. Of his majesty. Praise God. Look at Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrew 12 verse 1. 
Hebrews 12 verse 1 says Hebrews 12 verse 1 says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses hallelujah we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses angels are around about you you are not alone you are not alone everywhere you go know that you have witnesses that are backing you up because you are a living breathing witness that has been entrusted into this that has been given this mandate praise god it says witnesses now it says for us to lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us say i am an eye witness I am a witness of the gospel. Praise God. Listen, we all have a responsibility as a witness and a bearer of this gospel. We all have a responsibility. This responsibility is not only for the pastors. It's not only for the prophets. It's not only for the teachers. Praise God. This responsibility is for every single child of God. Every Christian. Praise God. Everyone who confessed him as his Lord and Savior, you are a witness of this gospel. You are a witness of his majesty. You probably you haven't seen, seen Jesus face to face. But guess what? I'm sure he has done so many miracles in your life. If he has done miracles in your life, then you are a witness of those miracles. Praise God. So you are a witness of this gospel. Now, if you go to verse 17, go to verse 18, it gives you advantages. Of being a witness. Of being an eyewitness. It gives you an advantage. Praise God. Now let's go back to our text. Chapter. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 16 again. 16 says. For we are not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says. But. He says. But we are eyewitnesses. Of his majesty. Praise God. Now look at verse 17. Verse 17 says. For he received from God the Father. Honor and glory. Praise God. God conferred upon Jesus. Honor and glory. Praise God. One great advantage that you certainly have in your life. If you stand as a witness of this gospel. Is honor. And glory will be conferred upon you. Praise God. Honor here means reverence. People will respect you for who you are. Praise God. The glory of God in the Greek means dog, doxa. Amen. So men will respond to you. Men will honor you. Men will respect you. Praise God. Men will see you as you are. A child of God. Amen. So he says here in verse 17, he says, For he received from God, God conferred upon Jesus honor and glory. He says, When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. Praise God. From the excellent glory. He says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. In whom I am well pleased. So one great advantage if you stand to be an eyewitness of this gospel, an eyewitness of his majesty, honor and glory is given you. And when you go to look at the Bible, honor and glory, they go hand in hand. Honor and glory go hand in hand. Write these scriptures down and you go back and read for yourself when it comes to honor and glory. Praise God. Romans chapter 2 verse 7. You can also read verse 10 of Romans 2. So Romans chapter 2 verse 7 and verse 10. Hebrew chapter 2 verse 7. And you also read verse 9. 1 Peter 1 verse 7. Revelations 4 verse 9. You can also read verse 11 of Revelations 4. And then in Revelations 5. 12 and 13. Please go read those scriptures. It talks about honor and glory. They walk hand in hand. They are often found together, honor and glory. So when you stand as an eyewitness of this majesty, 
of the gospel, of the good news. Honor and glory is conferred upon you. Honor and glory is put upon you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Now let's go on. Verse 18. Verse 18 says, And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Praise God. Now this is just to confirm and affirm that indeed Peter was one of the three weaknesses. Because he says, And this voice which came from heaven we heard at the transfiguration when we were with him in the holy mount, in the holy mountain. Peter is saying, Listen, I am I was a witness to this important occasion. It wasn't a device fable, it wasn't an imagined fable or something we put together. We saw it real, it was face to face, eyeball to eyeball. Praise God. And that's who a witness is. You are a witness, eyeball to eyeball of this gospel, and you have to be a, a mandate to it. Amen. Praise God. Now let's go ahead, verse 19. Verse 19 says, We have also a small sure word of prophecy. Praise God. He says, We, this is very, very important for us to realize. Now, when he said, We have also, he's talking about him and his apostles, that's James and John. But if you look at it in our world today, we is talking to us, you and I as Christians. He's saying, We, you and I, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Praise God. He's saying we, ha we have a realistic prophetic word. A more sure word of prophecy. A realistic prophetic word. Amen. Now, if you look at it, it says, Wherefore, also, a more, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Praise God. Amen. He says, Whereunto ye do well that take heed. Amen. A more sure word of prophecy. A realistic prophetic word. Something that won't fail even under examination. Praise God. Something that won't crumble. This word, a more sure word of prophecy. What is that more sure word of prophecy? The word of God. The scriptures. The scriptures. And he says, he says, whereunto you do well that ye take heed. He's talking about the word of God. The reliable, the prophetic word of God is this word of God. Amen. The scriptures, the Old and the New Testament. Amen. He says, whereunto ye do well that take heed. Amen. He says, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Amen. Praise God. He's saying to us that this more sure word of prophecy is like a lamp that will never go dim. He says, will continue to shine. The book of Psalms 119 verse 105. He says the, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise God. So this more word, sure word of prophecy as a witness of this gospel is yours because you carry it everywhere you go. You carry it everywhere you go. Now if you continue, he says, until the day dawns. Until the day dawns. He says, once the day dawns, you no longer need the lamp anymore. Praise God. You no longer need the lamp anymore. Because once Christ comes again, the truth is you no longer need scriptures. When Jesus comes, you don't need the scriptures anymore. That's what he's saying. But he's saying right now, you have to hold on to that lamp. Your lamp, that lamp, the more sure word of God, the word of God, continue to light your path. Continue to radiate your path. He says the path of the just is as a shining light. He says that shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Until that day dawns. And when that day dawns, you don't need that light anymore. Because you will stand before the light himself. Amen. Praise God. That's what he's saying. He says until the day dawns and the day star arises in your hearts. The day star arises in your heart. Amen. Peter here is saying that Jesus is the star. The moment you confess him as your Lord and Savior and you believe in your heart that he is Lord and Savior, you became a Christian. That moment, the star, Jesus, stayed in your heart. Praise God. If you look at the book of Revelation, chapter 22, 
Verse 16, Jesus says, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Revelation 22, 16 says, I'm the root and offspring of David. It says, the bright and morning star. Now he's saying that we have this more short of prophecy, the word of God. Praise God. He says, he says, when you take heed of this word, you hold on to this word. He says, this word will be a light that will continue to shine even in dark places. Because you are a witness. When you go to witness the gospel in dark places, the light of God will shine in you. He says, until the day dawns, until his coming, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and the day star arises in our hearts. Praise God. This is powerful. This is powerful. Say, so the day star dwells in me. The day star dwells in my heart. I carry the day star in my heart. Amen. Praise God. The book of John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God. And then if you go all the way to verse 14, he says, And the Word was made flesh. Praise God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst men. Praise God. Amen. So the Word of God is what we carry where we go and everywhere we go. You might not realize this. In your job, the Word of God is with you. In your business, the word of God is with you. In your driving, the word of God is with you. Why? Because you are an eyewitness of the gospel. You carry the Holy Ghost with you. You carry the death star in you. Because it dwells in your heart. It says until the day dawns and the death star arises in our hearts. That death star dwells in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Say I am a witness of this gospel. And I witness this gospel. Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to end soon. Verse 20 and verse 21. I want to read that to you. Verse 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private inter interpretation. Remember verse 19 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. A reliable prophetic word from God's word. Not from one man's mind. Praise God. Verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man. Not from man's own reasoning or man's own thinking. He says, But holy men of God spake as they were moved of by the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Peter is saying no interpretation is reliable on else it comes by the Holy Ghost. That's what Peter is saying. So if you see a prophecy, someone who comes and begin to say prophecies that you are going to die tomorrow, you ask the person, chapter what verse what is that? That is not from God. Because there's no place that God says you are going to die. But when someone opens and tells you a prophecy of something that is about to happen and says, I see death, but God says to tell you, this is your time of miracle. Amen. That death is not yours in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. That is a prophecy of the word. Not someone say tomorrow you are going to die. Praise God. Beware of such people. Those are false prophets. They are not from the word of God because that is not a sure word of prophecy. But rather, it's a private interpretation. But any interpretation of God's word of prophecy that is reliable comes from the Holy Ghost, from the word of God. Praise God. Amen. I want to strongly encourage us. If you go back to our verse 16, that says, But we're eyewitnesses of his majesty. My encouraging word for you is you are an eyewitness of this gospel. You are an eyewitness of the gospel because the gospel is the way. The gospel is the truth. The gospel is the life. The gospel is the reality to follow. When you stand and hold this more sure word of prophecy as a witness of this gospel, it will lead you in the right way. It will lead you in the truth. It will lead you in this life so that if there's anything that you desire, you will never lack. Because you are a witness of this gospel. Stand as a witness of this gospel. Don't let any man derail you. Don't let anyone 
dictate to you the wrong thing. But rather stay hold on the word of God. And as you do, the word of God will continue to give you honor and give you glory in your life in Jesus' name. Now say this after me. Lift up your right hand and place your left hand on your chest and say this after me. Say, I am a witness. I am an eyewitness of his majesty. I am a witness. I am an eyewitness of the gospel. Say, I am a bearer of the good news. Say, I am a participator. I am a partaker of the message. Say, I have a more sure word of prophecy. Say, I am a witness. Going to the utmost part of the earth. To preach this gospel. I am a witness. And so shall it be for you in Jesus name. Lift your voices right now. Begin to talk to God. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Because the more sure the prophecy dwells in you.